Giants of the fragrance industry are apparently scamming allegedly and are being investigated by Swiss authorities in collaboration with other governments to see if they're price fixing. In today's video, I get into that story and others. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around for more. <laughs> Hi, I'm Janique. I love perfume and I love mess and I love a good court case and in today's video I go through the lawsuit that is being brought against the four giants of the fragrance industry as well as 250,000 pounds worth of fragrances going missing in Manchester and some of the new releases in the perfume industry that you might be interested in knowing about. Let's get to it. Looks like I lost my the fragrance industry is essentially controlled by four companies, IFF out of the US being the biggest, Simrise out of Germany, and two Swiss companies, Gewaden and Fermanich. That's it. 70% of all the fragrances you see on shelves is made by one of these four companies. And isn't that wild? So this is how it usually works. A designer, a celebrity wants to get a fragrance made. They approach all four and they get quoted prices. And one of these companies is selected. And when the fragrance is made, they slap the name of the celebrity or the designer on the side and push it out to consumers while they retreat into the background. Never to be seen. The idea is that consumers aren't actually aware or aren't made aware that most of the fragrances we buy are being made by just these four companies and the other 30% account for all of the indie, niche and some designer brands that have the capacity to make their own fragrances. A good rule of thumb is that you, if you see a, a designer who has been making fragrances for a hundred years or so and has the capacity to push out a lot of fragrances, you can get a sense that this is a brand that makes its own fragrances the best example out there is chanel chanel does not outsource its fragrance making right and a lot of other smaller designer fragrance houses are under larger umbrellas like tom ford and killian sit under the estee lauder umbrella and estee lauder has the capacity to make fragrances for the companies that sit within its conglomerate but for the most part most celebrities especially one one-off releases are approaching these four companies to make fragrances for them and hire the perfumers that are on staff. Even though these four companies are giants in the marketplace and make up so much of the market share, I guess it's still not enough because they're being accused of working across the aisle with their competitors to price fix so they don't actually have to compete for contracts. And that is very much against the rules. So the Swiss authorities have brought this action and have raided their offices in multiple countries. They have been in collaboration with the US government, the UK government, and the EU to make sure there is transparency here and if there is any kind of wrongdoing that justice is served. The highest penalty though comes potentially from the EU, which will charge up to 10% of profits if they are found guilty. Now, in the case of a company like Simrise that brought in $13 billion from perfume, they're looking at spending almost a billion and a half on penalties if they are found guilty. And they are just the third biggest of the three. I can't even imagine what IFF would pay and some of the others if they are also found guilty of this. Now, it's been speculated that this has been happening for a very long time as indie brands who want to get into the perfume space have such a hard time even getting raw materials as these giants try to keep out anybody who could potentially compete with them. And the only companies that have the backing to even enter this space are companies like Estee lauder that are already conglomerates and can stand up to them it makes your blood boil when you think about it because if you spend time in the perfume world you've heard indie brands talk about how expensive it is to get raw materials and part of why that is is the interference of these four companies that have been allowed to run roughshod over the industry and eat up more of it as they take up more and more market share over time we even see companies like Furminich 
merging with DSM, a company that was a smaller competitor, because all they're doing right now is just taking over smaller companies so they cannot be accused of antitrust violations because if you own the company and you've merged, it's just strategic work and it's just strategic decision making. And so what we're seeing right now is a lot of these smaller companies being eaten up by the larger ones. So there's even less competition in the marketplace. And ultimately, as consumers, we lose, right? Because the prices get fixed for whatever they want it to be. And if they set those prices high, there's nothing we can do about it because they're controlling the industry. So why is this happening right now? If they have so much power in the fragrances and flavors world, what the fuck is going on to make it so that somebody is trying to hold them accountable? This is my theory and I could be very wrong. So most of their profits comes from the personal product side of things, not the perfumes side of things. So they make the, the, the fragrances that go into things like toothpaste and shampoos, conditioners, detergents, cleaning products, you know what I mean, right? All the things we use in our house on a daily basis. And that's a much bigger market share because every household uses these consumable products and has to continually replace them. Now the company that sells these to us, companies like Johnson & Johnson and Procter & Gamble are their own mega houses. And if they feel like they're overpaying because some illegal shit is happening on the fragrances side, they have the cloud and the power to step in to try to get things corrected so their prices can go down. Now, does it mean that we on the consumer side of things would see the benefit or would just Procter & Gamble see the benefit? I am not sure, but at least a few giants are going at each other. Giant Procter & Gamble, giant Gavidian, giant Swiss authorities, all fighting it out. And I would Love to see what happens. Speculation is that this won't actually be settled till 2024 because court cases take time. So I'm gonna keep my eye on this because hopefully we get to see more diversity in the fragrances world as these companies aren't allowed to strong arm any type of competition no matter how small because ultimately it means less diversity in the marketplace, less products for us and we ultimately we ultimately pay for this. So hopefully we see some good resolution here. I know that a lot of the sentiment out there when it comes to this case that nothing will come of it. But I think if you have companies like Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, Colgate, who are complaining about these companies, we might, we might see some resolution if those big giants are angry enough. So let's see what happens. A very different story, but a kind of a strange one that piqued my interest. And I'd love to hear more information about because Two and two not making four. It just does not make sense what is happening here. So a Cheshire, London, UK factory was broken into that belonged to Royal Fragrances London and 250,000 pounds worth of high-end luxury fragrances were stolen. These are fragrances that essentially sell for about 250 pounds to 350 pounds all went out the door as 10 people went into this factory and stole vans worth of fragrances and the owners of this company were not aware for two weeks. What? So they're looking to fulfill an order they are located in the middle east and most of the fragrances that are held in this establishment in this warehouse are meant for perfume buyers in the uk as well as in the middle east when an order wasn't filled the owners of the company reached out to the factory to see what was happening only to find out that two weeks prior the inventory went missing and a police report was filed, but the higher ups were never informed. What? How? How is this allowed to happen? Anyway, the police have been investigating, but there are no security cameras and no information about what happened. This massive theft happened and no one's the wiser. For a long time, it seemed like no one even knew what was happening or that it had happened, which is just wild to me and so strange. But this story is like one in a line of others of all of these thefts that have been happening as fragrances have begun to explode. The industry has boomed as people have gotten more and more into perfumes. It's become an even hotter commodity with people going out of their way to steal it. So what do you think about this story? Can we believe that 250,000 pounds worth of product could go missing from a warehouse 
without any executives and any owners of the company being aware of what had happened who do you think is at fault do we think the factory people were in on this do we think the factory manager was because like how do 10 people 10 people walk in and rob this factory and no one be found no evidence be left no camera be working it just see, it seems like an inside job allegedly i don't know that but i'm just saying it sounds fishy to me and i wanted to bring it to your attention what do you think about this story where do we think these fragrances ended up on the gray market i would be curious to find out last up i'm going to get into some newly released fragrances these are the ones that are on my radar there are obviously going to be so many more fragrances that were recently released since my last video going through some of the fragrances that had been released up to that point but today i'm just going to go through six or seven fragrances that used to be five that i'm interested in trying myself and talk you through some of those in my last video i talked about just about everything that was being released that came across my desk but i ultimately decided since i wasn't interested in like half of those like, i'm not gonna get into it because if you're looking for a super masculine woody fragrance you wouldn't be coming to my channel looking for fragrance recommendations anyway so i'm just gonna talk about the ones that i would want to try ones that i'm interested in and the ones that i hear people talking about so let's get into it first one i want to get into is juliet has a gun lost for the sun and this is our introduction to juliet has a gun's summer fragrances for 2023 and i'm intrigued but i'm not super excited so what's in this one it is a white flora with some fruit in it it has freesia gardenia orange blossom all the tried and true ones we have some alang alang for some yellow floral energy and some freshness there we have coconut we have vanilla we have musk everything here is pretty standard fare when it comes to a summer fragrance so i'm not sure what kind of difference juliet has a gun is offering to us as consumers but i will say i've always been pleasantly surprised by fragrances from this brand so i'm not gonna write it off just because the notes sound pretty predictable i will give it a try if sephora has a sample and i get to test it out i will let y'all know i'll report back but i'm excited to try it i'm just not excited to buy it that that's what i'm gonna say about that one i'm not a tom ford girly i'm not a tom ford baddie i usually stay far because for the price for the performance the two just don't go together for me it does not usually make sense but i am intrigued by the newest fragrance soleil de feu which is is supposed to be a summary fragrance it's called fiery sun essentially and what's in here is tuberose it's tuberose sandalwood some benzoin a little bit of musk it's pretty straightforward it's pretty stripped back and if it's a good tuberose i would love to give it a try i'd love to give it a smell would this be the first tom ford fragrance i spring for if it's special maybe but there are a lot of tuberose fragrances on the market and i stay looking for them i stay searching so in keeping with my whole vibe i will try this one because just it may be magic and i need to know about it but if it performs like all tom ford fragrances perform i am going to be disappointed what we can hope for is one of these middle eastern fragrance houses dupes that shit and we can get it at a discount we can get it at a bargain and i can report on that part but i will be looking for a sample of this or going into sephora to test it out because i do love tuberose so 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 much and if there's a good one or a great one i need to know about it and be on top of that so the Dolce line is getting another flanker. So this is from Dolce & Gabbana. Their Dolce line is a series of EDTs that are usually focused on a single note or a series of notes like a bouquet. And we're getting the violet version, Dolce Violet. Now, I can sometimes be a little salty about flankers because it sometimes feels like instead of giving us a new line because it's a completely different fragrance, it's going to add on more flankers to a popular one. It's a little bit annoying, especially if the DNA is very, very different. But with the Dolce line, I like the idea of it, right? Which is just a line of these EDT, usually less expensive. On like discount websites, you can usually find these for between $30 and $55. And for a good smelling Dolce & Gabbana fragrance, like I feel like that's a good price point. My favorite of the bunch is me. There's an iris one, there's a peony one, there's a lily one. They're all really lovely. There's a garden one. There's a lot of them. There's two rose ones. There's a lot of them. And this is the violet one. Now, I had mentioned in my last video, video on you know perfume news that it seemed like violet was the new trending um floral note because it felt like everything was coming out with violet in it and here we are again my prediction was right or my 
you know, observation was right, that Violet seems to be the thing right now. And so we now have Dolce Violet. No, Violet is not my favorite um, floral note. It's okay for me. And in some things, especially paired with woods, I find it to be kind of lovely, but I don't go out of my way to track down Violet fragrances. But because these are usually so inexpensive, they usually perform really well. They're usually very fresh and great for summer and spring. I might check this one out. This might be my first dedicated Violet fragrance. I do have Violet in fragrances in my collection, but that wasn't the reason I went and got them. This might be an exception. I don't know yet. I'll let y'all know. The celebrity fragrance among this bunch that I'm curious about, intrigued by, and maybe interested in trying is Dance Ocean from Shakira. The bottle is cute. I'll have it on the side of my head, a photo of it so you can take a look. And I'm excited about this one. Number one, you know, celebrity fragrances are usually pretty inexpensive. Shakira fragrances usually rate pretty well. And I'm intrigued by this one based on the notes. So the main floral notes in this one are rose and jasmine. Sounds good. We have some spices like pink pepper and ginger. Two of the spices that are exceptions for me in that I like these two. But the fruit notes sound very, very summery to me. And I'm very excited about them. We have orange, but most importantly, we have mango. I don't think we have enough fragrances with mango in it i'm just saying more fragrances need mango it is it's so delicious smelling so i am excited to try this one the bottle is really cute with the chain it's a vibe and i'm excited to check this out plus she's going through a lot we need to we need to support this this wonderful beautiful woman i'm just saying next one was supposed to be the last one but i now because jackie Aina posted about some bulgari bulgari fragrances i'm going to mention those next but before what was going to be the last one i was going to mention is the reformulation of calvin klein's euphoria edt so the edt version is from back in 2009 we've all tried euphoria right like it's one of those fragrances like ck1 that we've all made our way through at some point if we love fragrances i still have like a little mini bottle like a 15 20 mil of euphoria because it's so nostalgic for me and it still smells good that's the edp version but they're coming out with supposed to be like a lighter fresher version of the edt version except we don't have the reformulated notes yet we still have the 2009 notes on fragrantica and everywhere so i don't know what changes will be made but it is on my radar i don't know if i'll go out of my way to buy it because i do already have a bottle i rarely ever wear but i love to see an oldie but goodie come back with a vengeance and maybe convince a few youngins to get in on get in on it because you know what euphoria does smell great and those 20 year olds 15 year olds who've never tried it deserve to because you know it's it's so good so the last fragrance i want to talk about came onto my radar because i was scrolling on tiktok like we do and jackie Ina posted a video about some of the fragrances she recently bought while she was in the middle east you're stuck in dubai for seven hours because of a layover what do you do please you spend money don't even play with me i bought a lot of perfume because it's dubai of course i did okay i'm becoming a bulgari girl they're kind of becoming my new favorite i think these were meant to be like concentrated enhancers like toppers so i bought musk it's actually called magnifying musk and then i also have magnifying bergamot now these are pretty like straight shooters just musk just skin and then this one is bergamot they're just the note so that you can put it on top of something else i usually say no to samples everywhere but it's perfume maybe having perfumes in dubai that we don't got in the u.s so i say yes to everything give me a sample of the sample and it happened to be bulgari's magnifica and some other fragrances that are part of the allegra line so this is a new release it costs about 350 dollars and the top up magnifying essence costs about 250 dollars and so to get the whole package you're looking at about 600 now here's Here's the reason why like Bulgari isn't on my radar because it's supposed to be at the lower end of the fragrances they release. And in my estimation, it's pretty expensive, especially if you have to buy an accompanying bottle of something to make your fragrance perform better. So what is Magnifica? Magnifica is essentially just sandalwood and rose. Apparently it smells nice if you love a rose fragrance. I don't know what type of rose it is, if it's more matronly or if it's younger rose i am not sure but those are the notes in this one will i be trying it no i will not 
Mm. But maybe you want to try it and you're fascinated by the beautiful bottle and the whole aesthetic of Bulgari. And if you are, you're welcome. I just, you know, mentioned it, talked to you about it. And I hope this was helpful to you. Now, the Allegro line is pretty expensive, but you do have the Omnia line if you're looking for something more affordable and you want to get into some of these Bulgari perfumes. Those sell for about $130 to $150 and they're sold at places like Sephora and The Bay and Shoppers. So if you're interested in checking those out, I've heard good things. Do that. Let me know if you tried them and you enjoy them. So thank you so much for stopping by and checking out my video today. And I hope you enjoyed it. You're as outraged as I am that these four companies are allegedly price fixing. No. And that these thieves, 10 thieves, got away with all the perfume, each with about £25,000 worth what and all of these fantastic new fragrances some of which are better than the others that i want to try maybe you want to try i think the one that is highest on my list what i'm most excited about is that tom ford tuberose but i'm also pretty excited about the shakira fragrance i mean color me basic but i do love a celebrity fragrance because they're usually pretty affordable and they perform well and i'm all here for it here's the contradiction because you know if it's a celebrity putting out a fragrance they're probably going through one of the big four so i am supporting them even as i critique them i mean life is a lot life is all about contradiction isn't it anyway i'm glad you stopped by i hope you enjoyed the video check out my last video on the coquette aesthetic and some of the history behind it and some of the fragrances i would recommend if you're into that particular trend anyway i'm janique your fragrance fun time friend who loves talking about fragrance tea news and all the things and i hope you come by for more and if not just like comment subscribe give a thumbs down give a thumbs up it doesn't matter just do something show me you are here i'd love to see it Bye, y'all. See, you've been under my mind. I've been seeing.